Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial I'm going to give you a basic explanation of zip files and we're going to download some software, freely available software which we can use to create zip files but also open zip files. So the first thing we want to do is go to our web browser. I'm using Firefox, you might be using Internet Explorer or Google Chrome and we're going to go to Google and we're going to type in 7-zip and when we do that we're going to get this website here 7-zip.org and we're going to click on the link and it's going to give us um, really these two options of of what we can download we can either download a 32-bit version or a 64-bit version now we need to work out what is the right version for the computer that you're using this is a Windows application so we need to know whether you're using 32-bit or 64-bit it all depends on you know when you purchased your computer and the type of hardware that the computer is using but an easy way to find out is simply go to the start menu and you go to the computer and you right click and check its properties and inside the properties it's going to tell you that the system type is 64 bit or 32 bit here so in my case it's 64 bit so we need to download this version here you may have to click on this one here. In theory, the 32-bit should work fine on this machine as well, even though it's running 64. This will just perform a lot better, this version of the application. So select the relevant one. If you're unsure, I would probably select this version and try and install that first and see if it works OK. But I'm going to select um, this 64-bit version because the type I'm using. And we're going to go to SourceForge and the download would start, it's going to start automatically and it's going to give you this uh, option to save the file it's 1.3 megabytes, we can click save if you have any problems with that, if it's not showing you can use this direct link here as well and it's downloaded the software just my antivirus is checking whether it's, it's an ok version or it's just checking against its database for any problems and it's saying that it's safe, uh, the software says it's safe to install so once you've downloaded it, depending on what version or what browser you're using, you need to just really execute the file itself. So you launch it and you go through the process of installing the file. It's a very small file to install and just follow the basic instructions. So once you've got the software installed, um, you're, you know, you're going to have a few different features, extra features when you right click with your mouse. But you won't really see these extra features until you have some files to work with um, and we're going to give some examples some basic examples of how to create a zip file and maybe how you would use it and how to open a zip file we call it extracting a zip file so in this example I've created a little folder here and inside this folder I've called it 7-zip tutorial <coughs> and inside this folder I've got four files and they vary in file sizes you know there's the smallest one is uh, 390 kilobytes and this will be 1 megabyte or 1.1 meg this will be 1.3 meg and this is a 4 megabyte file 4000 kilobytes is roughly around 4 megabytes you can see down here 3.92 to be exact so <clears throat> what we actually want to do is select all of these files now in, in your case you, you may have other files inside a folder you know I'm only using this as an example but you could have had a list of Word documents or Excel spreadsheets and you want to put them into a single file where you can email it to someone possibly or you might want to put it on your pen drive and someone else wants to copy it or you just want to you know package all of these files into one simple file which you can send over the internet this is typically what we do so if I wanted to send this to a client or some other one someone else on the internet and I want to send it via email rather than attaching all of the four files separately I could send them a zip file and zip, you know, the zip file uh, file format, you could say, is, is a very common format. Most Windows computers or Apple Macs will be able to, or you know, Linux systems will be able to open those zip files without having to install any sort of special software. You should be able to open those zip files quite easily. So in this case, in this example, I'm going to select the four files, and when I've selected them, I'm going to right click. I have to right click on what I've highlighted or so what I've selected. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go down to 7-zip and it's going to ask me what do I want to do you know I don't want to extract the file, I actually want to make or I want to add to archive there's some other options here but we're going to click this add to archive option here 
and it's going to ask me you know what do I want to call this this uh, this archive and typically you know it's going to look at the folder name and it's going to name it that as default so if you name your folders quickly this could have been 2013 paperwork or a name of a project or something like this if you name it quite accurately it will create the file name for the zip file accurately as well so I'm just going to leave this as it is it's fine the archive format there's various formats in here again you know 7-zip this is really 7-zip's archive format but really what you want to use a common format would be zip file so if you use this zip file it's more than likely going to be easy for someone at the other end when they receive the email with the zip file to open it and see the documents you know these other ones are less common let's say so we're going to stick with zip file the compression level uh, I suggest you select you know ultra or leave it on ultra this basically takes a little bit longer to compress the files but at the same time it's going to give you a smaller file size at the end you know the, one of the objectives of having this zip file is also it should really reduce the file size of all of these files combined together it may not be a lot but it's better than sending them all separately anyway so the compression method you can leave this as default the dictionary size and the word size you can leave all of these options as default the number of CPU threads depending on how many you know processes you're using but in general if it's if it's a few files here you know you can just select all of the CPUs to do the work it'll just make it a lot quicker basically all of the rest of these options I'm going to leave default I'm going to do another more advanced tutorial a bit later showing you how you can create uh, passwords and protect the zip file so at the other end when the user tries to open it they'll need to put in a specific zip uh, password to, to actually open up the zip file but in this case we just we're not going to put any passwords on there we're just going to leave it as default most of these settings are just left as default I'm going to click OK and it's going to start doing some work here we can see that it's doing some you know it's progress bar it's a pretty quick job depending on your machine it might take slightly longer or even quicker but um, we've now got really all of these one, two, three, four files are all located in this one zip file. So now I can attach this in an email and send it as a single zip file. And when it gets to the other end user, they can extract it and they'll see these four files. These four files, if I select them and look at their properties, I can see they come to 6.47 megabytes. So 6.47 megabytes but if we look at the zip file it's 6.34 megabytes now I know there's only a small difference it's not a huge amount it's about 400 kilobytes but that's almost half a megabyte so you are actually sending less data but when it gets to the other end so and, and extract it the file sizes will equal to this amount again the 6.47 so this zip file is doing a couple of jobs it's giving you an easier way of attaching to an email um, and also uh, it's reducing the actual file size this would probably have been a better solution if you had much more files here there may have been very small files but you may have had 30 or 40 files here and you wanted to zip them all rather than putting attaching 30 or 40 files to, a, to an email before you send it so this would be a good example of where to use a zip file in general you can use this just to, to make the file smaller and easily send via email so let's imagine that you've attached this to an email and you've sent it across the internet and someone else has received this particular email or let's imagine someone has done this job and actually sent you the file and you need you now need to well now you want to actually extract this file and see these four files sitting inside so you would have received this via email, you would have probably saved this to your desktop somewhere. So we're just going to put this on our desktop for now. Um, and when we right click on the actual file itself, we're going to go to 7-zip and we're going to say extract files here. So when we do that, what it will do is dump the files onto the desktop. The four files that were in this zip file they're still in this zip file but it's extracted them it's removed them from the zip file and given us them so we can display them quite easily here so this is a useful way of sending you know larger amount of files or getting that data across the internet in an effective way let's say I can also right click on here and go to 7-zip and open archive and if I do that 
I can actually see what's in the archive before I actually extract them or, or you know pull them out of this zip file let's say I'm just going to drag these and drop them in the recycle bin and another way of getting the files out let's imagine you had the four files here but you only were interested in this word document you can drag the word document by left clicking and dragging it to the desktop or dragging it to a specific folder and then you know you can open this file and do whatever you need to do with it you don't have to extract everything but you know it's nice to see what's there anyway so this is a, a good example of how to use 7-zip and some of the useful functions it has and we'll go through more advanced tutorials at a later date but for now I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to use 7-zip